In this brief talk, we'll take an outsider's view of the Nexus framework from scrum.org and what's come to be known as the Spotify model, which consists of squads, tribes, chapters and guilds. We'll see how a possible analogy may be drawn between the Nexus integration team and Spotify's infrastructure squads and client app squads, and another possible analogy that might be drawn between the Nexus itself and the tribe. We'll also consider what the implications may be for both of these approaches for organisations that wish to implement the classic Scrum of Scrums. Now, um, it's tempting to think that there may be a synergy between, let's say, the tribe and the nexus. And that's the, 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 the rationale behind that. It does, it does seem to be sensible in a way because they're both... They're both uh, groupings, if you like, of autonomous teams. In the case of uh, Nexus, they're groupings of Scrum teams. And in the case of the Spotify model, they're groupings of the squads. But whereas in Nexus, you would expect a Scrum team within that Nexus to be drawing work from a product backlog, and that product backlog would be shared across all of the teams within that Nexus, you don't find that in the Spotify model. In fact, some of the squads within the Spotify model might be using Scrum and others might be using Kanban or who knows, something else entirely. And so you don't really find that product backlog or that need to, to have uh, formal events like sprint planning or um, you know, sprint reviews and so on. This is largely because in Spotify, the, the need for integration to occur in a managed way has been overcome through tooling, through having continuous deployment, continuous integration, and the ability of each individual squad, which can be seen as being the, the analog to the Scrum team, the ability of that squad to release immediately into production when it needs to. There is, however, a certain type of squad within Spotify, okay, a, or a certain, a certain kind of uh, team, if you like, the, uh, the client app squad and, uh, you know, the integration squads, whose, whose purpose is to facilitate the ability of these squads to actually integrate and release their work. And so that can be seen as being somewhat analogous to a, a Nexus integration team. They are there to facilitate, to make sure that these squads, these, these uh, very autonomous teams, are in fact able to release their work without impediment. Right? So there's a definite synergy between the Nexus framework and the Spotify model on that count. The squads or the scrum teams aren't just left for themselves. There are other teams who will be able to step in and help to facilitate integration as and when needed. But the, the real difference between the Spotify model and the, uh, the, the Nexus framework really lies in the intent behind the scaling approach. Um, in the case of Nexus, we see something that's very, very focused. It's very focused on integrating an increment by the end of a sprint, making sure that uh, the teams are facilitated towards being able to do that. And although the Spotify model does address that, it's largely overcome integration needs by continuous integration and deployment and by having an architecture that allows the squads to deploy their own work independently of any others. The Spotify approach is much more general than that. It, it harkens back, if you like, to the, to the original Scrum of Scrum's problem, which is what are we here for? So you don't just see the, uh, the squads and the tribes, you also see the chapters and the guilds who are there to, to provide knowledge sharing and all of the other stuff that you'd expect uh, collaborative teams to be able to do. And I think that the, the key takeaway here, when we compare the Spotify approach with the, the Nexus approach is, is, it's really this. If you try to set up a scrum of scrums, you need to be very, very clear about what you're doing it for, because neither the Nexus approach nor the Spotify approach actually talk about a scrum of scrums, and that's interesting, OK? 
okay? I, I think there, 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 there are reasons for that. And it's because of this basic problem. If you set up a Scrum of Scrums, you need to be very, very clear about why you're doing it. Is it there to overcome integration matters, to facilitate integration across teams that might be working on the same product or allied products? Or is it there to share knowledge? Okay. We really need to be clear about why we're doing this because there are many, many things that you need to take into consideration when you apply Agile practice at scale. 